Hello everybody, this is Biohazardia and welcome to my How to Draw Sea Wings tutorial. I'm going to be using Tsunami as an example, so let's jump in and get started. First, I'm going to start with a circle for the head, uh, just so I know exactly where my snout placement, horn placement, etc. is going to be. Then I'm going to start drawing the snout. Now, Sea Wings have sort of a beak-like snout, so near the bridge of the nose, I'm going to put a small dip in. Uh, and then where the snout is, there's going to be a slight ridge uh, where the beak forms. Um, next, I'm going to do the mouth. I'm going to do a sort of grinning tsunami here. So I started with a slight grin, um, drew out the jawline, and then put in those big teeth that we all love on tsunami. Next, I started with the eye. I made her eye a little bit larger because I wanted to give her an excited and alert expression. Um, I ended up using the transform tool to fix the snouts. Again, this is really common. You shouldn't be afraid to use the transform tool when you're drawing. Um, I touched up the eye to give a little bit of an extra expression uh, using the eyelids. And once again, I'm showing how you can use a line to determine exactly where you want to put your eye. Now I'm going to determine some other features of the face. Again, in the sketch so that with the lines, I don't have to be confused. I can just follow my messy sketch and I don't have to worry about everything being clean. Uh, while I'm trying to detail out everything. So next I start working on this little ridge of scales next to the Sea Wings nose. Um, it's usually a different color than the rest of the Sea Wings face. If you think of the Sea Wing having sort of more armored ridge, darker scales on the top usually, or lighter scales on the top. And then they have the main scales for their face and they usually have that little bit next to their nose. I used the transform tool to move around so I could fit in the rest of the drawing. And then I started detailing on how I thought the top of the ridge of the head and the horns would look. So sea wings tend to have curved horns. So that's what I gave Tsunami here, along with detailing up that top ridge of scales I was just talking about. So next I'm adding in the second horn, which you'd be able to see from this position. And I'm also adding in the ear. Uh, the ear again is just a few curves in sort of an almond shape. And then I'm going to make her grin a little bit more apparent. So now I'm going to start detailing where the light spots are going to be, the little bioluminescent stripes that all sea wings have. Uh, I like to sort of detail this out along with continuing detail with the face because again, I like having a sketch where I can kind of play with it before I start actually putting down line art, which is going to be the serious business. Next, I'm going to draw out the shape of the neck. Sea wings actually have pretty thick necks. So instead of making a serpentine S shape, I'm making sure that the neck is a bit thicker to convey the sort of muscle that the neck has. And now next is the fins. So with the fins, uh, they go along the backside as well as along the bottom. And it's actually very easy to forget the fins that are along the bottom. So with the fins, you can start by drawing out the kind of the bone where the fin would be. Um, but if you actually look at the sea wing reference, uh, the fins actually kind of start with a fleshy bit that connects up with the bone. So in this case, I'm showing you what I typically like to do, which is here, but I'll also show you a different method, which is actually the method that's presented in the official reference by Joey Ang. So in the actual reference, what happens is there's a slight flap of skin that connects to the first sort of bone of the fin. So I'm gonna do it that way in this picture, just to be, again, accurate to the books. So I'm gonna start on the back fin now, and I see a lot of people draw the back fin actually starting at the forehead, and I've done this too, and honestly, it can look really cool, um, but it's actually a stylistic choice because in Joy Yang's official reference art, the back fin starts kind of at the back of the skull, sort of not completely at the bottom of the skull, but halfway down the back of the skull, sort of, so that's how I'm drawing it here. Next, I'll look at the scale. So once again, I'm going to detail out the underbelly first, which I usually like to do. And then I'm gonna try to figure out where the actual scale placement should be, giving enough space along the neck for those big, wide, triangular scales that sea wings have. So first I'm gonna draw that line that lets me help orient exactly where I want my scales to be. And then I start with those big triangular scales uh, going down the neck. And that helps me figure out the placement of the rest of the scales since the rest of the neck scales kind of fit around the triangular scales. 
Then I added this next part in for fun. So I decided to kind of put little gill lines in where along the triangular scales, kind of along Tsunami's neck. And not everybody does this. And I actually haven't done this in any of my pictures before, but I thought it'd be kind of cute and just something extra to show if you wanted to add gills where they might be. Now I'm just gonna focus on cropping the picture and adding the scales around the triangular scale. So these scales kind of like overlap nicely and all you have to do is just sort of, you have to draw lines in between the triangular scales and your underbelly. And same thing with the back, just like I'm doing here. Um, this allows sort of an overlapping effect to create sort of like a smooth look to the entire neck as opposed to drawing each scale in individually and then having kind of a mismatched pattern at the end. So it looks like we're pretty much done with our sketch at this point. Um, looks good so far. And now all I have to do is lower the opacity and get to the lining. So for the lining step, it's just going over your sketch, figuring out exactly what line weights you want to use and everything uh, based on where you think your shading would be. So I'm just going to speed this part up until we get to the end of the lining phase since it's pretty easy and all you're doing is you're just following your sketch. One quick note I want to make though is that Probably more more experienced artists, you guys are already going to know this, but to more beginner artists for your line art, make sure you're making your line art, of course, in a layer above your sketch layer so that you can color in it after and such like that. Now we've finished lining everything, actually almost everything. We still have the googlies underneath the sea wing chins. Now I like to call them googlies because I think it's funny, but I've heard them called things like whiskers, uh, little noodles. Um, what they're actually called, I think are barbells. So if you look at pictures of catfish and stuff, they have barbells. And a popular headcanon is that the older a sea wing is, the longer the barbells are, as I just painted there. But Tsunami's kind of a young dragon, so, and a turtle is too as well, if you're drawing him, or most characters are gonna be under the age of 20, so I like to draw short barbells or googlies. At this point, I'm gonna take away the sketch layer to see how my line art looks, and I think it looks all right. At this point, I like to draw in my signature just to make sure I don't forget it or anything like that. And then after my signature, I'm going to start coloring. So I did this in my ice wing tutorial as well, but I'm going to explain sort of the nifty tool I like called magic wand tool. So first what I do is I select the outside of my line art and then I invert it. Uh, you can do this on MetaBang, Procreate, many different tools. But when I invert it, it takes the entire area inside my line art. And then on a layer underneath, the main line art, I can put in the color and that immediately just colors in almost everything for us. But there's usually quite a lot of bleed through, like around the fins and near Tsunami's horns, there's a little bit of bleed through. So I'll have to go in and make sure that those are taken care of later. Another thing I'm doing is I'm coloring in the line art in a dark blue to make sure that the picture looks a bit more realistic and that the line art blends in with Tsunami's coloring a little bit more. So I did that by taking the layer and locking it, opacity locking it, or alpha locking it, depending on the program you're using, and then just scribbling over the layer with dark blue in order to color the line art a dark blue. And in this case, I also actually set the line art to multiply, which keeps the line art looking kind of dark. And that way, uh, if I color Tsunami's back a dark blue color, the line art will actually show over that as a darker shade. So I won't have to worry about anything weird where the line art looks lighter than the actual shade of the scales on Tsunami. So as you can see, I'm just finishing up, touching up the picture, trying to fix any places that got colored by mistake. Um, and then after that, I'm onto blocking in the different colors. So here I'm gonna be coloring Tsunami's underbelly, just blocking it in the color of her underbelly. I'll be coloring her fins, the back of her scales, etc. And once again, I'm gonna speed up this part of the painting just because it's literally just kind of coloring in the lines that you've made here.
So there's just a couple parts of the coloring that I think are good to talk about. So the first one would probably be the eye. So first what I do is I color in the eye, the general color that I want to have the Slera. So for Tsunami, that's blue, and I'm gonna shade it in a color that's similar to her scales, which is kind of that dark blue. If I were drawing, say, like an ice wing or a sand wing, and I wanted to have a dark Slera, then I would color in the white part black instead. Next, I'm gonna fill in her iris. Uh, Tsunami is described to have, I think, translucent green eyes. So I'm gonna fill that in just a nice light green and begin to shade it and draw in the shape of the pupil. Most of the process is just kind of shading the eye and putting on detail after detail in order to make the eye look more realistic or bright or shiny or whatever you want to go for, honestly. Here I made it a luminosity layer above the layer that I colored the eye, just so I could give it a little bit of extra shine. And I, I like doing that to give the eyes a little bit of an extra twinkle. And I'm just adding detail after detail to try to get the shape of the eyes, what I want. Uh, for her pupil, I colored that in a dark green and I made it a little bit more slit-like, just uh, to show her like fierceness, I guess. The last things I'm going to color that I think are interesting to talk about with sea wings are their luminous stripes or their bioluminescent stripes that they can light up to talk with in aquatic or just light up to look cool, frankly. Um, and I add a couple other details as well, like darkening Tsunami's horns and coloring her teeth and stuff like that. For her teeth, I used a slightly yellow color just because teeth aren't actually pure white. They never are, they're always slightly stained. So poor Tsunami has slightly yellow teeth. And then for shading, I just took a kind of pale, non-saturated blue to shade in the area where her lips uh, kind of cover the teeth. So they'd be slightly shaded there. Next, I'm coloring in the horns. So I'm doing this by taking a layer above my main coloring layer and clipping it using the clipping layer function, which is super useful. That makes sure that none of my colors go outside the lines and I'm just making the points of her horns darker. So now we're pretty much finished except for the lights, the bioluminescent lights that I was talking about. On my sea wings, I usually like to give the lights sort of a soft glow so that the viewer can tell that they're supposed to be luminescent. So what I do to do this is I make another layer above the rest of my clipping layers and I set it to luminosity, which is sort of a bright layer that brightens everything up. And I take a soft airbrush and I just go over the lights in with the luminosity and the airbrush. And it makes sort of a glowy feel. Then I also in the luminosity layer, take the watercolor brush or marker brush or whatever you want to use. And I color in the other lights. You can do this either coloring in your line art that you've made, or for me, I'm kind of lazy, so I don't like to make line art for the other lights. I just sort of color them in. And then afterward, I'm going back over them with the airbrush for a little glow. And finally, one thing I want to note in this example, I actually forgot about uh, coloring the lights and I colored them underneath my line art layer, but I would actually normally recommend you to do the luminosity for the lights above your line art layer, because that way the luminosity will affect your line art layer and it will kind of allow the lights to look a little bit more realistic and glowy. So that's it, we finished everything and now we have our complete sea wing headshot of the glorious fighter dragonette Tsunami. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider giving a like and subscribe. It helps other people find the tutorial more easily. And if there's anything that you think I could have explained better or that you really appreciated that I went over, feel free to drop a comment. Thanks and see you in the next tutorial.